Okay, so you know you really like playing Marvel Champions, but for some reason it's not hitting the table enough. Granted it isn't a stressful game to set up, but with the amount of content and choice out there, you don't necessarily want to be building a custom deck for every hero you might have a whim to play. So why not consider a pre-constructed non-signature deck or two instead? Welcome to the guide to building your own plug and play Justice decks. What the aim of this videos in this series will be is to build a couple of sample decks with differing themes. But while doing so, arming you with all the information you need to build your own, dependent on your collection. And one assumes you already know what sets aspect cards apart from signature cards is their more linear game plan, and Justice is no different. These yellow bordered cards are the foremost experts on dealing with threat. Also known as dealing with one of the two Lost Cons. And this is an interesting contrast to aggression like we've already talked about because it pushes more of the onus to win the game on your chosen identity signature deck and in return gives you peace of mind that you should have no problem dealing with schemes whether you're on your own or multiplaying. So with the captain obvious waffle out of the way we need to decide on two cool themes for justice decks and in this instance I've strayed from a vanilla just focused on threat removal build as that's something you could build yourself or look up my previous video on justice's archetypes and staples. So instead we're going to be looking at a dual threat build that rewards you for keeping on top of things by shelling out some cherry on top damage. And then secondly, we're looking at a deck that pushes its luck by fetching more schemes to deal with, but buffing you and your output in the process. Kicking things off with the dual threat build, we're going to start with the ally pool. Now, as a general rule, Justice has an about average requirement for allies to support them, so 5 or 6, including the signature one, is a good starting point. As such, we wanted to pick out the most synergistic, and so Daredevil and Jack Flag were two obvious choices. Neither of these are cheap, but Daredevil is one of the few allies that does two basic powers at once, and Jack Flag does similar, but more potently, at the cost of it taking a couple of extra turns to get the damage through. We're also bringing Wiccan, and the evergreen Nick Fury. Granted the former can be a bit swingy, but for his cost and three swings at bat, you're almost guaranteed return on investment. And as for the latter, you could ultimately fit him into any deck and it'd be okay but his flexibility is like hand and glove with this list. The theme continues in earnest with the events. Most decks focus on these as their bread and butter and Justice doesn't really deviate from that. Our sweet spot is 4 play sets aka 12 yellow boarded cards. Clear the area and turn the tide will reward you for putting yourself in the position to meet the requirements of the card. With the former gleefully gifting you card draw so long as you get your ducks in a row, and the latter is pseudo free damage, and not forgetting you don't have to proc this off of using your basic power, any thwart effect will do. Then we have pivotal moment and stealth strike to round out the spell slinging, and to be clear you will have to wait for the pivotal moment to play this card, because it being focused on the villain only, you'll likely be pushed into advanced stages or defeat the boss entirely with this. But still in this deck it's a nice addition. And Stealth Strike doesn't feel very stealthy, but providing you get the proc off, it is value on a stick. For our resources and supports, it's a fairly familiar. The triumvirate of basic resource cards is, is just about the easiest way to start building a deck, unless it's replete with zero and one cost cards, and the very same point applies to Power of Justice. We're talking about supports is another fairly humdrum story. Bring one of either a heli carry if you have no choice, a queen carry if you can, and maybe even an Avengers mansion if you're at the table with friends. I have spoken. But then we come to a one of a beat cop. Perhaps slightly overrated, but it's guaranteed to be decent and can come in uber clutch. Even the chip threat removal can do you all sorts of favours enabling the events we just went through by clearing schemes. All in all, our little Bobby is in the win column. One copy of Heroic Intuition and a similar Uno of, of Operative Skill round out the list with some nifty consistency. 
The card you see on the left of your screen makes me want to cry, it's so vanilla. But if you cry tears because you've just stopped yourself from threatening out, then jobs are good un. With operative skill, you have one of the more underwhelming looking cards to make its way onto printed cardboard, but I'm sorry, it's not forced. You can choose to use it when you want, and this deck is all about the fine margins and precision thwarting, so don't worry, be happy, and there you go, dual threat with bells on. You cannot, and I mean cannot say, you're not a jack of all trades with this merry band of cards. However, our other list is a bit more singular in its approach. Leaning a bit towards multiplayer centric, it's still a perfectly able, pre-constructed deck at any player count. And most importantly, it's a wee bit different to what we've talked about so far. In this here deck, we actually want side schemes to be revealed from the top of that there encounter deck, so let's once again talk allies. We've opted for another four that synergize really very well with our game plan, and the first two, Agent Coulson and Monica Chang, are of the Fetch Me A Card variety. Agent Coulson still has very little to choose from in terms of preparation cards, but worst case scenario is a solid body with thwarting capabilities for an adjusted cost of two resources. Sounds like pure math to me. And then Monica Chang, by bringing a copy of Surveillance Team straight from wherever it is to the battlefield, is gravy. Now, there ain't many Marvel Champions allies that do something similar, and that's because that sort of value is a tasty treat indeed. Oh, and did we mention the support you bring out is given the gift of an extra use as well? Yes, she has a trash body. Yeah, did I just say that? But well, anything other than a mediocre stat line would see half the Q&A department get fired. Jessica Jones and Quasar, on the other hand, are an ickle bit more straightforward. Our Jessica likes to smash face a bit, but given half the chance and a ball populated with some side scheming, and she's more than able to get her thwart on. And, like a mechanical half-brother cousin, Quasar pulls double duty up front by removing threat by the scalable plenty as he hits the table. It's a fine thing indeed when Justice allies bring the axe and guns as well. We're bringing another three playsets of events that look suspiciously like, one way or another, multitasking and making an entrance. To be fair, we probably should have given one way or another more screen real estate because, well, she's in a sense the fulcrum of this whole endeavour. At least it should probably be said for solo players. Much like you see greater minion density in multiplayer, that also applies to side schemes. By the way, without the tools to deal with it, this is fairly middling. Believe it or not, three extra cards, or put another way, two net cards, is rarely going to justify you fetching for the easiest side scheme you can find, from a strictly numbers based perspective. But the idea behind this is net tempo. See more of your deck, play more of your cards, control the destiny of your game. Multitasking is here because you have a decent array of mental resources at your disposal, and this is impeccable value when you do. Seriously, this is all sorts of keeping on top of the villain scheming. And making an entrance is a keep on chugging card. The fact that you're actually attracting more threat on board with this type of deck, and the fact that you can plus two thwart and heal yourself in the process, is just the ticket. The resources look fairly similar to our other list, however we're opting for just the one copy of Power of Justice because we got a decent splattering of zero and one cost cards in the deck. And then, over in Support Town, we're bringing a copy of Beat Cup for the same all-purpose reasons we brought one in the other deck. And Insert Ramp Card here is also along for the ride. Which brings us again to one copy of Command Center and Surveillance Team. Now, the former is another one of those sleeper cards. In fact, there's every possibility this won't proc a great deal, but all you need is for it to proc two or three times a game and value is restored. One drops are so easily played as the second card on your turn, so quite honestly, these stars have aligned here. And we already made reference to Surveillance Team when Monica Chang was the topic of conversation. Suffice to say, this is a card that has been gobbled up by the at this point massive card pool in Marvel Champions. But if it comes as part of a sweet value package, then who are we to argue with its efficacy? It's hard to find more inane platitudes for heroic intuition. Suffice to say that we are here to thwart, and thwarting plus one is good. 
Counterintelligence will rarely see actual play on the battlefield. Remember this was the card that enabled old Philly boy Agent Coulson to hit the table at a discount. But, and I say this with real trepidation, this can do some work in some scenarios where you find yourself threatening out and you need an oh crap that scheming villain just bit me on the big toe button to press and hey presto, they're licking your toe instead. Now imagine if you were followed as a skilled investigator or as a skilled investigator your job is to follow someone. Seriously though, what would you do if there was a side scheme in front of you and a four health minion sitting waiting to thwack you? That's right, you'd play followed like a good little MC player. That aside, we're playing this because A, synergy, and B, value, which is more or less the same for skilled investigator. We quite like to cycle with this deck, that way we can put our sequencing pants on and make sure we can graph those perfect turns to chain reaction all these awesome cards and well a card like this enables said game plan and for that we say thank you. Before we go there are a few new releases already spoiled for the remainder of 2023 and so I'm going to pop those up on screen now as they may well be worth consideration if you are from the future and you now have access to them. But my golly, that is and was and has been two justice-based plug-and-play decks for you to consider and consume, just as if they were your own cardboard offspring. I must admit these two decks are a bit more niche than the aggression ones we've already laid on you, but I still think there's some lessons learned here, and a number of these cards can be swapped out for whatever you have in your collection. Trust in your judgement and you'll be fine. Stay tuned for our not so deep deck dive into the leadership and protection aspects. Alas, I've been the voice of Benji and this video has ended. <laughs>